Okay, so we'll be using all the things today. So I am gonna be using a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, grab yourself two or three pillows, um, and that should be fine. Um, pillows are quite good, but they, they're a bit more squishy than bolsters, so you might need a few of them. I'm gonna be using a couple of blocks. You can use books, um, you can get creative with the blocks. Uh, they just give an extra padding and they're quite firm. Um, so if we're doing lunges, it just gives you a little bit of extra space between you and the floor. A chair will do or just a little stool um, blocks. And then we're going to need four blankets. So, um, yeah, you kind of really need four blankets. If you have got four blankets, cushions, uh, cushions are good for that. Um, grab a few cushions from your sofa if you have these things if not you'll make do be creative the point is that restorative yoga is supposed to be comfortable so the best way to make yourself comfortable is getting more and more and more squishiness involved so i think that's all i've got i've got a couple of blocks got a couple of flat blocks got a couple of bricky blocks got four blankets got a bolster got myself and let's get going so excellent and then you can always save this if you don't want to do it right now, um, you can always save it. Uh, when it comes up as a post, there'll be three dots in the top right hand corner and you can save that and then you'll be able to do it whenever you want. And this will be recorded, uh, uploaded to my YouTube channel uh, within 24 hours. Okay, let's start by sitting up. Now I'm going to straddle the bolster because it's straddle your cushions. You can sit on a chair, you can sit cross-legged, however you want. So I'm going to start sitting and I've just got a very gentle kneeling up position um, and the thing with the bolster is that I've got some space in the knee crease and I've got space between my feet and my bottom so there's not none of this kind of pressing down so if you don't have a bolster you can just sit um, you can kneel up and just maybe place some cushions under your bottom between your feet and between your knees so let's have the hands just gently on the thighs close the eyes or you can always gaze down if you're not comfortable to close your eyes Let's broaden through the collarbones and move the heads of the shoulders back, slide the shoulder blades down, lift the sternum slightly. And what's really good about kneeling on a bolster is that it kind of sets your spine up quite naturally and effortlessly. So you could have a little wriggle around, make sure that everything's comfortable, but you'll find that you've got this nice natural curve in the lower back. The pubic bone is kind of, you feel the pubic bone and the sitting bones on this bolster. And that's kind of giving you this triangular base so that the pelvis can sink down and the rest of the body can lift up. You can draw the throat back a little bit as if you're just ironing out that natural curve in the spine. You can lift the crown of the head as if it's reaching up to the sky. And then just to settle on your breath, you spent some time working the body out and just finding that natural kind of gravitational um, posture where everything's lined up with gravity you can really switch off you can use minimal effort to hold you here and now you can tune into the breath so taking some lovely deep breaths and they don't have to be so deep that they're dramatic but just kind of coming home coming back to your breath remembering that you do breathe you are breathing all the time and just having a little explore with the breath, maybe deepening it. If it feels good, then why not? Just really increase that uptake of in-breath and slow down that exhalation. See what happens. And if it's not comfortable for you to do that, just watch the breath. Even just watching creates this amazing balance in the nervous system, just switching to that observer if you don't want to be the controller making the breath different from what it is and just be the witness of the breath just notice i am breathing there's my in breath there's my out breath so you can choose how much you want to do at any given time how much you want to explore you don't have to do what i say just be curious Notice if your out breath is the same as your in breath, as in if it's more or less the same amount of time, you're welcome to, to count that breath if you want to. You could try to make them a little bit more equal, or you could even try to make the out breath a bit longer than the in breath. So maybe if you're into counting, you could maybe breathe in for four and out for six or seven, or you could you could just try to 
equalise them in for four, out for four. And if counting's not your thing, just breathe in, breathe out, see what happens. Just enjoy the process if you can. And you can imagine that you're breathing in through the left nostril. Next time you breathe in, imagine that you're breathing in through the left nostril. And then imagine that you're breathing out through the right nostril. And then breathe back in through the right nostril. Just in your mind. And then breathe out through the left. So you've done a little rainbow. So you breathe in through the left. Breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. And breathe out through the left. So you're welcome to carry on with that. Or you can actually do it literally physically with the nostrils by bringing the right hand in front of the face. You can block the right nostril off with the left thumb and you can breathe in through the left nostril. And then block the left nostril with the fingers, release the thumb and exhale through the right nostril. And you can breathe in through the right nostril, same side. Block the right nostril with the thumb and breathe out through the left nostril. So all this is me using my right hand. You don't have to use the right hand and you don't have to have any fancy hand positions, but you'll just be blocking off one nostril at a time. And you breathe out first through that nostril and then in through the same side and then you move to the other side. So you can imagine this rainbow pattern of breath. So I'm going to leave you to play however you want to play, hands in your lap, uh, using a hand to block the nostrils, either using your mind or your hands and your nostrils to breathe in and out a few times. And again, if you really want to work on um, counting, you can exhale for longer than you inhale. So maybe I inhale for four and exhale for six or seven, maybe even eight, double. And then if you're counting or not, we're trying to slow the breath down. Just naturally, without any panic or anxiety rising, just gently slowing the breath down, really resetting the nervous system this morning. And if you're enjoying this process, you could also try pausing at the top of the in-breath. So once you've breathed in through one nostril, before you breathe out through the other nostril, just pause, maybe block both nostrils and then exhale. You can even pause at the end of the exhale if that's comfortable. It's a bit harder, but you can still do it. Pause before you then inhale through that same side. And just take a couple more rounds, so two more whole rounds, but going over the rainbow and back again is one round. And if you can, then finish by exhaling through the left side. So we started on the left and we finish on the left. That just is your kind of more calm side. So you can finish the round there and bring the hands back to the thighs. Pause here and allow that breath to equalize now. So if you were using visualization techniques, now you're visualizing both nostrils taking in the breath as you breathe in, both nostrils equally breathing out. And obviously, if you've taken your hand away, you can feel that both nostrils are sharing that breath in and sharing the breath out. I'm just noticing any effects of that practice. 
you'll be noticing as we go along through the practice so that you can actually develop some memories and some neural patterns to help you find this sensation later. And then we'll just drop our chin down to our chest. Stretch out the back of the neck. As you drop the chin, it's like your chest is lifting to meet the chin. So the chin won't meet the chest, hopefully, because we're going to keep the back straight. We're going to keep the collarbones broad. We're just going to lift the cranium bones up away from the upper vertebrae of the neck. And it's like this traction, as if I've got my thumbs under your skull and just lifting up a little bit, feeling just making space in that congested, usually congested area. If you haven't got congested area there, you're very lucky. And you can teach me how, how you did that. Take some breaths. And you want to imagine that the breath is actually going right to that area. Using your power of your mind to really heal and intensify the sensations. The out breath is the relaxing, the releasing. You can imagine the in breath is taking energy there. And then still with the chin down, but just rock the head from side to side. Now connect it with your breath somehow. You can either go all the way from one side to the other with an in breath and back with an out breath, or you could go to one side as you breathe out and back to center as you breathe in, and then change sides as you breathe out and back to center as you breathe in. So however it works, connect it with your breath. Slow movements. So we spent that time slowing the breath down. Let's keep that. The more we can slow the breath down and move with the breath, the more our nervous system is going to reset and balance out. So finish with the chin to center. And then next time you inhale, gently center the head. And as you exhale, drop one ear down towards one shoulder. And as you inhale, to the head and as you exhale drop to the other side and as you inhale center and I want you to kind of make as minimal effort as possible so I'm not really forcing my head down I'm not going for end range of motion I'm going for really smooth effortless easy going I mean why can't we be nice to ourselves on a Wednesday morning And then we'll turn the head. So exhaling, the chin now comes towards the shoulder and inhaling, the head comes back to centre. And again, it doesn't matter how far I turn my head around. I'm just going to keep it to the head movement. I'm not going to move my shoulders or my chest. I'm not going to go to end of range of motion and push and push and push. I'm just going to flow with the breath. So I'm looking for more smooth movements connected with my breath. So all the time I'm coming back to the breath. Slowing the movement, slowing the breath cycle and then gently drop the chin down to the chest one more time. Very nice. Center the head on an inhale, bring the hands to the shoulders on an exhale and as you inhale, let's do circles, elbows together and up and on an exhale, back and down. Inhale together and up. Exhale back and down. You can add a little bit of neck movement if you want. And then let's go the other way. Inhale back and up. Just flow with the breath. Very good, hands back down onto the thighs, deep breath, reset, notice, check in. And then let's take the arms down and as we breathe in, stretch the arms up. You can look up a little bit if you want and as you breathe out, stretch the arms down. You'll find that as you turn the hands, as you lift the hands, the palms will turn forwards and then as
they go up, they can turn towards each other. And you can just let that natural rotation happen. Don't get in its way. So when your hands are down, they're probably by your hips. When they're halfway up, they're probably facing forward. And when they're up, they're facing each other. And just flow with the breath. The inhale is lifting you up. Imagine that you're lifting your rib cage up away from your hips. And the exhale, you can keep that length you've created and just imagine you're literally just dropping your hands. Now inhale, take the right arm up, I'm not mirroring you. Take the, oh I am mirroring you. <laughs> take the right arm up, take the left hand onto the floor and as you exhale, just reach over. I've got to remember I'm mirroring you now. <laughs> just reach over, you can let your bottom ear fall a little bit. Roll that bottom shoulder back and down so it's not jutting forward. Reach up. Just Feel a stretch from the hip to the fingertips. Take a few breaths here and then gently lean in and bounce back up as you breathe in and as you exhale take the other hand down and then reach over. Again bottom shoulder is going to roll back and down, bottom ear can fall down and you're reaching from the hip which is reaching back down to the floor to the fingertips reaching up and away diagonally. Take a few breaths as if the breath is really opening that space between the fingertips and the hip. And then sink down a little bit and then bounce back up. And then as you exhale, you're going to go to one side. As you inhale, you're going to come all the way up and exhale to the other side. So rainbow breathing now. Inhale as you change. Exhale as you reach. And your arms can be a little bit softer. We've gone away from the static holds and the straight lines, moving into kind of just flowing with the breath. And then inhale, take both arms up. And as you exhale, you're gonna take the right hand forward and the left hand back. So I've got bolster, so I've got one hand on the front of the bolster, one hand on the back of the bolster. But you could equally have hand on the outside of the leg if you wanted. Next time I inhale, I'm going to sweep both arms up, turn my sternum forward, and as I exhale, I'm going to twist to the other side and let the hands drop front and back of the bolster. Then I'm going to inhale, arms up, and I'm just going to carry on. So the arms are spiralling up and over, and it's the sternum that's twisting to the side as I exhale, to the centre as I inhale, and to the side as I exhale. So kind of think of the whole of the rib cage as maneuvering this twist because if the rib cage can move then the shoulders and arms are just literally floating as you breathe in and out and again just keep with the breath very nice okay i'm coming up and over to the first side don't worry if you can't remember what the first side is just go to one side now i'm going to take that front hand a little bit further over so it's not in the center on the bolster now i'm on the outside of the leg the back hand is now going to come up and I'm going to reach diagonally across to the opposite knee. Okay, then I'm going to reach up as I inhale, drop the back hand down as I exhale, and as I inhale, I'm going to float to centre. As I exhale, I go to the twist, the hand goes onto the leg. As I inhale, the back hand comes up. As I exhale, I reach diagonally over to the opposite knee. As I inhale, I come up. As I exhale, I drop my hand. Let's go. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. Inhale, back hand comes up. Exhale, reach diagonally over. Inhale, back up, spine straight. Exhale, drop that hand. Inhale, float to center. Last time. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale over. Inhale. Exhale, hand down. And inhale, hands float to center. Very nice. Exhale, take the hands down. And just draw the hands back towards the hips as you reach the chest forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Press the pubic bone down. And just lift the head so that you're looking at the wall and ceiling where they meet. And then as I exhale now, I'm going to stretch my arms forward. Space between the shoulder blades. Roll back towards the sitting bones, towards the lower back, and drop my chin down. And one more time, inhale, slide hands back, drop pubic bone, squeeze shoulder blades, look up and exhale, roll back on the pelvis, tuck the chin, space between the shoulder blades. 
Very nice, come back to neutral spine. Now let's come down now, take the bolster out of the way. Come and sit on your bottom with your, just gonna adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. Uh, come and have the soles on the floor, the soles of the feet on the floor. Um, the soles together, the bottom on the floor. And you don't have to have your heels in towards your bottom. Uh, you can have lots of space there and we're just going to do some little circles and what I want you to think about is that I'm rolling around the sitting bones so I can feel my two sitting bones on the floor and I'm rolling to the outside of one to the front of both to the outside of the other one and to the backs of both sitting bones so my weight is moving and shifting over and my pelvis is rolling forwards and backwards as I come forward and back and off to the side. And then we'll go to the other side and we'll connect it with the breath. So I like to do an out breath with a semicircle going backwards and an in breath with a semicircle going forwards. Very nice. And then we're just going to rock forward and backwards like we were on the bolster, rolling on the pelvis. So again, I'm, when I'm breathing out, my arms are straight, space between the shoulder blades. I'm right on the back of the, the pubic bone is rocking up towards my chin. I'm now on the back of the sitting bones, almost coccyx on the floor. As I breathe in, I'm going to roll all the way over on those sitting bones, point the pubic bone down, squeeze my shoulder blades towards each other and lift up. Very nice. And then just sit, nice straight spine or vertical spine, sitting bones and pubic bone dropping forward and down. Very nice. Okay, let's now come on to hands and knees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my blankets and I'm going to make quite a thick roll. So I've got the blanket folded in four and I've got a rectangle. And I'm going to use the long side of the rectangle and make it into quite a nice thick padding for my knees so it's wide enough it's kind of the, the width of the mat I'm gonna have my knees there because we will be coming up onto the knees in a minute I'm gonna have my um, bricky blocks nearby at the front of the mat but let's just have a little bit of cat and cow first so wrists under shoulders knees under hips inhaling same as before but this time you can feel the belly stretch your pelvis isn't um, fixed to the floor anymore so you can feel that really tilting back look forward you don't want to look up you want to just look forward squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other and that's your inhale as you exhale really feeling that massive movement in the pelvis available pull the belly in pull the lower ribs in and open out the back of the heart and if you inhale coming up as you exhale squeezing so as you exhale you're really stretching out the back and pulling in the front and as you inhale, allow the front to stretch wide open as you shorten the back line. So I'm shortening the space between the back of the head and the lower back. So one side long, one side short, and this is activating the whole of the central nervous system. And then I'm gonna tuck my toes under. I'm gonna inhale in the same way. And as I exhale, I'm going to press my hands down into the floor, push my bottom back and up, drop my head and just start to lengthen out the legs a little bit. And it's not a full dog because we're going to come back down, very gently drop the knees at the floor, come into your inhale. And as you exhale, tuck the tailbone under and press the bottom towards the heels. Maybe the forehead comes to the floor, maybe it doesn't. Inhale, back to this cow or upward cat. Exhale, pressing into some sort of down dog, dropping the head, lifting the bottom up. Doesn't matter if the heels are up, doesn't matter if the knees are bent. As you inhale, you slowly drop the knees back to your blanket. As you exhale, tucking the tailbone, curling the spine, bottom to the heels, towards the heels, forehead on the floor. One more time. Inhale, cow or upward cat. Exhale, downward dog some version of that suits your morning practice inhale straight back down to your upward cat and exhale child oh let's do one more they're so nice 
doesn't matter what it looks like because as soon as you've reached the edge then you come straight back down and you're just breathing and then keep the toes tucked under press the bottom towards the heels press the hands forward broaden through the collarbones loosen out the neck we're going to spend a moment here stretching out the bottom to the feet cleaning the body and then come back onto hands and knees we're going to take the left toes back straighten out the left leg and press the floor away with the with the hands you can either have the right toes tucked under or flatten the floor and if you want to raise that left leg up you can pull the lower abdomen in press on the floor and try to keep as if you've got a belt around your waist Try to keep the belt nice and tight as you very gently move the knee forward towards the elbow and step the left foot wide of the left hand with the toes pointing outwards. And then you can come up onto your blocks here if you want to, if you need a bit more room. And you can just practice a very, very subtle cat and cow here. So you either got your hands on the floor or up on blocks. Just a very subtle cat and cow, not much going on. Now press down into that left foot and rise up onto the right knee and the left foot, hands up into the sky. Again, back foot can be flat or toes can be tucked under. Reach up with the right hand, take hold of the right wrist of the left hand and reach the right hand over to the left. Inhale as you reach up, exhale as you come back, hands to the floor. Inhale, take that left leg back into bird dog. Exhale, bring that foot back down. Inhale, press on the foot, rise up. Exhale, reach over to the left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bring the hands back down. Inhale, left leg steps back, last one. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, press on the left foot, come up. Exhale, reach over to the left. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, hands come back onto the floor. Now, take your blocks, because what we're going to do now, you might want the hands on the blocks, you might not, but we're going to bring that right foot forward. So we're going to tuck the toes of the right foot under the hands on the floor, lift the right knee and bring that right foot so that it's outside of the right leg. So if I'm forward, I'll show you here. I'm now going to take the blocks under my bottom, knees are wide, feet are wide and I'm going to come into a gentle squat so I can push the knees wide with my elbows and I can maybe bring my hands together. And I'm going to take three breaths. And what I'm going to do is as I breathe in, I'm going to push my belly out. And as I breathe out, I'm going to pull my belly back in. And again. So it's kind of like Kapalabhati, but just belly breathing here. Very nice. Now I've got to turn back around, otherwise I won't have room. So I'm here and I'm in my squat. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift up my bottom pressing the hands down and I'm going to very gently come back into my hands and knees position. A little bit of cat and cow and then I'm going to do the other side. Inhale, cow, exhale, cat. I've got my blocks there in case I need them. I know what I'm doing now. So I'm coming to neutral spine, press the hands into the floor, take my right toes back press the hands into the floor, pull in my belt, pull in my lower belly and lift my back leg up. Okay, and then I'm going to keep that belt as I very gently take that knee out to the side. If I'm cocking my leg up to have a pee against a lamppost, as you do, take my right foot wide, knee wide, foot wide. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit of cat and cow here just to open up that area, very minimal movement. And then I'm going to press down on my right foot, lift up, inhale. Take hold of the left arm, exhale. Inhale. 
exhale. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up again. Inhale, arms up, then I'm taking hold of my left wrist with my right hand. I'm exhaling as I reach over to the right. I'm inhaling as I reach up, and I'm exhaling as I bring the hands down. One more time, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. And then I'm gonna tuck my toes under the back foot. I'm gonna come back into that squat. So I'm gonna bring my left foot wide, sit my bottom on my blocks, open my knees, and then I'm gonna inhale, belly out, exhale, belly in. Inhale, belly out, exhale, belly in. And last time, inhale, and exhale. Very nice. Okay, then I'm gonna bring my hands onto the floor. I'm gonna lift my hips up, and then what I'm gonna do is turn my heels out and my toes in and just take these blocks and make a little stack. I'm not gonna be here for long. Don't put too much weight on them. I'm just gonna rest my forehead. Just take a few breaths here. And if the forehead doesn't reach, you can use the blocks with your hands. Just to have a little stretch out and a wide leg stretch forward bend. And then I'm going to bring the hands onto the floor and I'm going to step back into down dog and I'm going to bring my blocks under my forehead. So what happens here is I'm not going to sink my weight into my head so that my neck is really constricted. I'm going to press my feet and my hands into the floor and just let the weight of the head drop into my blocks. I can keep my heels up, I can keep my knees bent because I'm reaching my sitting bones up, but I'm pressing forward and down with the hands and back and down with the balls of the feet. And I'm going to let my head rest on the blocks for a few breaths. And then I'm going to lift my head and gently bring my knees down. And then I'm going to keep one of those blocks under my forehead as I take a nice child pose with my knees nice and wide, plenty of room for my belly. Take a few breaths again, forehead resting on the block. And very gently bring your hands alongside your knees or under your shoulders and press yourself up with your hands. Come to sit. If it's comfortable, stay here for a moment. If not, just move into a nice, comfortable seated position. Just let everything relax. We're upside down a little bit, so we're just going to come back upright. starting to feel the effects of the slow flow and the nervous system reset. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two of our blankets and this is my blanket folded in to four so it makes a rectangle. I'm going to make, I'm going to fold that again so it's more like a square. I'm going to take two of those And I'm going to just pop them diagonally on my mat. So I've got a corner here at the front where my bottom is going to sit on the corner. I'm going to move my blocks. I'm going to take my bolster. I'm going to come into a wide leg. Wide leg forward fold. Now here, if you haven't got a bolster, 
I think the best thing to use is the front of a chair. And I want my my bottom, my sitting bones, to be on the blanket. And that, but then the legs are kind of free to fall. I've got, I've got the corner of the blanket in between my pubic bone. You're going to angle your bolster so that it's kind of diagonally uh, up towards you. And you're going to, because you're sitting up a little bit, you're going to let your sacrum flip forward a little bit. And once you've got that movement in the sacrum, so not moving the sacrum back and rolling, and moving the sacrum forward, once you've moved that sacrum forward, then you can kind of curl and rest your forehead again on the bolster. Now, if you want a bit more, then you can take the bolster further away. But we're not looking for a big stretch. We're looking for a very gentle curve in the spine. Once that sacrum has flipped forward, you can allow a gentle curve in the spine. Forehead supported, legs nice and wide, not too wide. We don't want to be feeling an edge. We want to be able to relax for a minute or so. You can close your eyes if it's comfortable, or you can just stare at a gentle still point. Try and relax the arms. You can have the hands on the bolster if it's more comfortable. Real minimal effort. And if your head was on a chair, I'd recommend having the hands on the chair as well, and just resting like this on the chair. Well, sometimes you might be able to go further forward without feeling any edge, and you'd be able to use blocks creatively there. But we've come away from our kind of more active, even though it was chilled out, we've come away from that now. We're going more for passive restorative section. I'm just moving to a more meditative practice. Minimal effort to set up and lots of time and space to melt into your support. So we're looking for having the floor come to meet us, having as much support as we can so that we can really let go into the next few poses. Very gently bring your hand onto the chair or the bolster and pressing that down, lift yourself back up, let the bolster rest. Okay, push the bolster forward a little bit, bend your knees, you can take hold of the inside of the knees, bend your knees, hug your knees, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to sit to the side of this bolster, now if you haven't got a bolster, three or four pillows, and I'm, I'm even going to support the bolster with a block, so I'm going to lift it up a little bit, angle it a little bit more. So now I've got this bolster angled. I'm going to have my hip at the edge of the bolster. I'm just going to cross my legs comfortably. So what end up, ends up ha happening is that the sole of the bottom foot will just be kind of uh, nesting. Your, the shin of your top leg will be nesting in the sole of your bottom leg. But however you want. And you might want to, if you're quite bony, put a blanket between them. Now you can have some space between the bolster and your hip. And it's up to you how much you deliberately turn if you've got kind of lower back sacral issues then don't really go into the twist but do lengthen up so we're going to have a hand either side of the bolster lengthen the spine so it doesn't matter how far you're twisting you're lengthening the spine and then you're going to lay your belly 
and your chest on this bolster and then you'll turn your head towards the side of your legs and then you'll rest and just try to rest the arms completely so they're not really hanging if it's not comfortable if there's problems with the breast area or the belly area you can try popping a blanket either under the belly so there's more space for the breasts or you can have a blanket under the chest area so maybe it's more comfortable for the neck and you can add the more the higher up the bolster is going to be the less intense this is going to feel so you could even put both blocks underneath the bolster and just bring the bolster up to you. Trying to relax as much as possible. my hands back so that they're under the shoulders and I'm going to really really super slowly lift myself up I'm going to let my head kind of drop down as I lift up I'm going to come up and then I'm going to sit with my chest away from the bolster just take a comfortable seat and feel the bolster in the, sac in the sacrum area and just take a breath. So we're going to turn to the other side. The side of the hip is, you don't have to have it right touching the bolster. Um, you're going to have a gentle cross of the legs, probably the foot or the shin in the foot. And hands either side, you're going to lengthen up. You don't have to be forceful in the twist. Lengthen first and then rest the belly and the chest on the bolster. And then turn the head towards the side that the legs are. And rest. Again, if you wanted uh, problems with the larger breasts, then you could have a cushion under or a blanket under the ribs. If there's neck issues, you might want to have a blanket under the chest just to make that neck area a bit more comfortable. And if the lower back's playing up, lift the whole thing up and come up a bit higher. So however you are, enjoy if you can. Let the arms relax. Sometimes the arms really try and hold on here. Let the legs relax. Let the head relax.
And then very gently bring the hands back under the shoulders. Press yourself up, but let your head hang as you're coming up. Again, face away from the bolster. Bring your sacrum towards it. Sit comfortably. Nice sudden movements. Just let your nervous system translate this sensation, creating new neural pathways, remembering what led to this effect. Okay, so next one, we're going to move the bolster out of the way. And with this, I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to use quite a lot of stuff. I'm going to use three blankets, and I've had them from this uh, rectangle fold where I folded the blanket four times and it's made a rectangle. I'm going to make a concertina, so folding it in three, so that it's quite short, quite thick, and quite narrow. And I'm going to place three of those, one on top of the other. And you could use a cushion here, you can use whatever, you know, once you know where we're going with it, um, you'll be able to, to use it. And I don't use the bolsters because they're quite thick, but if you get those um, short, flatter bolsters, they're really good for this. I'm going to have those three blankets, I'm going to have a block, and I'm actually going to bring the bolster back, just because I can't resist, and that's going to be at the top. So this is a side-lying um, pose. So I'm gonna have my hips on the floor. Then I'm gonna have this uh, little lift, kind of lifting up the side body. Then I'm gonna have my head on the block so that my arm is free. And then I'm gonna take my top arm and just land it on the bolster. Now my hips on the floor, my shoulders on the floor. I've just got a little opening here a little lift here if it's too much you can take one of these blankets away and it's nice and soft so it's kind of forgiving you can have your legs long you can have them slightly bent you can have them in towards your chest i'm going to take my glasses off if the if the block is quite hard you can have another blanket on the block try and rest dropping your weight in and you're just getting a lovely opening to that top side of the body Sinking in. And again, you can use what you've got. If you don't have a block, a couple of cushions under your head. If you don't have a bolster, a few books under your hand. If you don't have any blankets or cushions. And that top hand, you can bring it behind your head and make sure you've got enough block behind you. But what you can do is just open a little bit, just rocking the ribs back. So those top ribs are just easing back. Your top elbow is coming back. You've got your hands, your fingers on the back of your skull. 
So I'm just giving a little stretch here before we come out. And then you'll use that top hand to really press down. You're going to let your head be heavy, then catch the floor with your other hand. Push yourself up. So you can have your hand resting on those blankets. Bring the spine up. Take a breath. And then we can do the other side. So you gently turn away from the blankets and then all the way to the other side. And again, it's up to you how you, how you have your legs. Your hip is going to stay on the floor. The blankets are going to come in your waist. The shoulder is going to feel natural on the floor. The ear and the cheek is going to come on the block. And if you had even more blankets, you could have a softer landing for your head. You don't want too much weight on this uh, bottom shoulder. And then the hand starts on your hip. You can turn the palm up and reach it all the way over. And you might want the hand forward, you might want the hand back, wherever it is going to enable you to relax and let go. The legs can be long, they can be bent, the knees can come in, whatever. So that you can really max out on the stillness. So sometimes you've got to lean back a little bit to keep it in place. Sometimes you might want the hand just draped behind you. Maybe you don't want to add this bit. And then that top hand can come to the back of the head. Make sure you've got enough block behind you. And you can start to take the elbow and the ribs back a little bit. Maybe the top hip drops a little bit. Just to add a little stretch. And then coming back, dropping the hand onto the floor in front of the block and pressing on that hand to come up and then the other hand comes, takes the floor and then you can very, very gently come up. One hand on that pile of lovely blankets, upright spine. And then let's move our props out of the way and come for a little bit of Shavasana. So for this, if you want to have a bolster under your legs, you can. And what I like to do, because I've got nice little tiny short legs, I like to also have a block under each uh, heel. And then I am going to roll down. So we can also do this a ni nice neck roll if you want. Take your blanket back in its um, rectangle, so four folds. Roll up a tiny bit of the top and then place it behind you with a rolled bit towards you. And we can organize that when we come down. So it's slightly rolled. You might also want a blanket over you or an eye bag. But once you set up the legs, we can arrange everything else from there. So that's going to be far too low down for me. So I'm coming down very gently. And I'm going to take this neck roll. 
under my neck and I can then roll it up. So I don't want to accentuate the space under my neck. I want to fill the space under my neck. So I can roll it up just so that I've got enough that my neck is supported. And then what you can also do is take the ends of the roll, kind of undo them a little bit and move them up towards your ears. And then see if you can tuck a little bit under around the sides of your head so it doesn't completely fit under but you may feel like your head is completely held uh, in this position and if that all feels a bit awkward and you'd rather not do that then go ahead and take it out and if the neck roll feels a bit in the wrong place then go ahead and take it out and if it feels yummy keep it in and let your body now sink down, have a little scan through. See if you can drop any more tension and really you are supported here. The earth has really got you. Your feet are supported, your knees are supported, your pelvis is supported on the earth. Your head is supported, your neck is supported, your shoulders are supported on the earth, the backs of your hands are supported. So see if you can now drop your weight into the earth, into your support. You know, there's a real difference between being held by the earth and just lying on the earth. So when you feel like you're held, you will let go much more. So you can imagine that you are literally being cradled in the lap of the mother, mother earth, the earth, the ground beneath you. You're not just lying on the floor, you're being held and cradled by your mother, the mother, your real mum. <laughs> when you feel safe, and supported and secure your body will find its own homeostasis so what we've done in the past hour is create the space needed or create the environment for the body's natural urge towards homeostasis the natural urge towards healing natural urge towards well-being our innate capacity for finding balance and being whole. We provide the environment and the body does the rest. And all we have to do is rest. And then we'll know what to do. So I invite you to lie here for as long as you possibly can. And when you do have to get up, Spend some time rolling on your side, staying there a little bit, coming up slowly. Whenever you catch yourself today, come back to that breath. Try to move in sync with the breath, whatever you're doing, whether you're walking, writing, making tea. I'm so out of touch with what people do. I think that's all they do is write and walk and make tea. Just connect it to the breath, connect your life to your breath and then your body will do the rest. And so I hope that you can stay all day in this position and I hope you can join me again on Sunday uh, for another session. Have a lovely day guys.